Alright, I'm excited to get back into some canvas projects. Things that freed up just a little bit. I've had a few things on my mind that I've really wanted to dial in. I just haven't been able to invest much time into it. So I'm using this video as an excuse to kind of dial in this roll top canvas backpack that I've been playing with. This is the test bag that I tried out at first, but it needed a lot of changes. I need to add a lot more material for the roll top. I just didn't have quite enough to get it rolled down. I need a much longer strap for the cinch, just in case you want to stuff the bag a little bit, you need a little bit more adjustment. I'm gonna use a little bit lighter weight leather. This is like 11 ounce hot dipped harness. I'm gonna use something like six to seven. I'm gonna add a zipper pocket here on the front. The only thing I'm worried about is it's gonna give a little bit of a smiley face look. I hope it's not too distracting. I'm really hell bent on getting a zipper pocket on the front of this thing. I have a little zipper pocket on my laptop bag that I use on a daily basis, so I have to have it in there. I'm also gonna add a zipper on the side right here that allows you to access the bag without doing the roll top every time. I'm gonna rivet the straps on the outside of the canvas this time. It'll just save me a ton of time on the sewing and putting this thing together. Oh, and the biggest thing, I'm gonna turn this thing into a backpack. So this is more of a tote style. I think it'll be more functional if we make this a backpack. So I'm gonna change up the backside just a little bit. And I won't be doing it in this natural color. This is not waxed. It's just like a duck cloth. But I've got this olive drab 16 ounce wax canvas that I'm going to use with the same color of leather. That's the combo. Woo! I've been working this pattern up all day on Illustrator. Some of these areas I'm doing a double fold with an overlap section so that I don't have to bind it. But most of the interior I am going to attempt to do some grow grain binding on the inside. We'll see. Anyway, this stuff's all pretty boring, but I've been working on it all day and I don't want it to be forgotten. Normally I would send this file into pdfplotting.com or our local printer, but I didn't have the time to wait and I need this pattern done tonight so I can come out and get working on it first thing in the morning. So instead, I'm just gonna use the measurements as a reference from the screen and cut up the pattern manually. I knew I'd be making lots of changes to this pattern anyway, so it's probably best I didn't spend any money getting it printed. The whole pattern making process is usually calculated measurements combined with a lot of guessing and just winging it. I found this 16 ounce waxed canvas on Etsy of all places. I'll add the link in the description where I got it. It's actually tough to find a lot of sources for a variety of weights and colors in waxed canvas. But this stuff feels really nice and if I decide to keep using 16 ounce, I'll probably keep ordering it here. There are so many similarly shaped pieces to this pattern, we're using some masking tape to label each piece. It definitely helps keep everything tidy and organized. We tried a few different cutting techniques, but Michael and I both felt like the rotary knife was the best tool for cutting the long straight edges of all the canvas pieces. I can definitely see myself picking up an electric round knife in the near future if we keep this stuff up. For the leather, I used some dies I already had made for the lash tabs. I even have a die for this back strap base piece that's almost identical to what I needed here, but I wanted to spread out the straps a little bit, so we're just going to cut this piece by hand. One tricky thing about wax canvas we learned is that nothing likes to stick to it. So the double-sided tape really didn't do much to hold things in place. But one great thing about wax canvas is that it folds beautifully and basically eliminates the need for pins or clips to hold the folds together while sewing. So we spent some time working out some of the more smaller details of this bag. A lot of this pattern is new stuff for me and I wasn't sure some of it was going to work out the way I hoped. Luckily canvas is a little more forgiving than leather and allowed us to make a few mistakes here and there. I used this beautiful 9 to 10 ounce hot dipped harness leather from Wicked and Craig. You've heard me talk about it quite a bit, I'm in love with this stuff. There's a post on my Instagram where I explain what it is if you're interested in picking some up for yourself. We're using a number 5 YKK zipper for this bag. We cut a few teeth off each end so we wouldn't risk hitting the teeth with the needle as we're sewing the tape into the seams. Then we put a stop at the bottom of the zipper, but I didn't have the right stop for the top. It's not a huge deal because we added a small piece of canvas folded to each end of the zipper to act as a zipper stop, and it also gives a nice finished look. Around five years ago, I ordered a batch of woven labels with our logo on them and haven't put them to use yet, so I had to throw one on this bag. 
And since I know this question will come up, I ordered these from a site called qualitywovenlabels.com. Then I jumped over to our flatbed Juki for this part. It's actually really nice to have a flatbed for sewing big flat parts like this, but I mostly just didn't want to have to change out the thread color and the presser foot on the Texo. Also, the tension settings are a little different for canvas, so it's nice to not have to mess with all that for this one part. And again, I don't want to bore you with all the details, but I always get asked about thread on every project. So for both the canvas and the leather bits, I'm using 92 bonded nylon that I buy from threadexchange.com. Okay, we hit somewhat of a snag. We're having some issues with the binding situation. I've had a lot of different thoughts about this. I think we could get away with binding just with other canvas, but then the raw edge looks pretty bad. Um, I went to Walmart and picked up some 5 8 inch grow grain ribbon, which is what I really wanted, but they didn't have 3 quarter inch. And it just doesn't work that well in the binding attachment. The other issue I'm having is that the attachment is moving around too much. There's no set screw on this plate. So as soon as you start sewing, it just slides away. There's actually a hole here and a hole right there that's blocked by that plate. I think I could drill out a new hole, but then I got to find a screw that fits. There's a lot of solutions I think we could come up for this, but one of the issues is we're on a real time crunch. I think we can actually make this 5 8 of an inch grow grain work. It's really close to the edge, but it definitely worked. We just need to figure out a solution to get the attachment to stop sliding. Okay, Michael's making a little wedge with some heavyweight leather. Let's see how it does. I like that squeeze. Dude! Yeah. <laughs> nailed it. Well, let's try this 5 eighths now and see if that works. All right, come on, baby. So the wedge works pretty well, but we're still getting slight movements in the attachment, which is throwing the stitch off the edge. So between the small movements and the wrong size tape, given an uneven feed, it still wasn't working right. My dad was dropping something off at our house, and I asked him to come back and see what he help. thought. If anyone knows how to fix it, it's this guy. <laughs> Thank you. So what we're going to do is just drill a hole through this, finish out that hole since the plate's covering it, and then use this Allen key to slide down in that hole and uh, we'll nip it off right about there. And it'll just be kind of a pin to hold this in in place. I think that'll be good. I think it'll be great. We don't have to thread anything. And this is a nice enough. Group. Yeah, that won't get caught. I think caught. That, the material will flow over that. So my dad's advice was super helpful, and I think if we had time to hunt down the right bolt to fit the threads, this would be our best solution. Unfortunately, the Allen key didn't give us a tight enough fit. So since I'm coming down to the wire, this is something I'll have to figure out later. So I'm just going to try and use some duct tape to secure it down, and maybe even a thumb clamp. We'll see how it goes. Big surprise, still getting little movements with the duct tape. But the bigger problem we're having is feeding this 5 8 inch tape through a 3 quarter inch attachment. It's feeding through too unevenly. So my last ditch effort is to try using double sided sticky tape to wrap the binding around the edge and see if it'll stay in place enough to stitch without the attachment. Yeah, that's not going to work. Gosh! Alright, that's it. The binding got the best of me. I'm tired of trying to figure it out. And the attachment just kind of sucks. So I'm going to look into getting an attachment for the Juki and seeing if we can get one that works better or maybe even ordering a different one. Because I looked on Texel's website and they don't even sell that one anymore. So maybe it's because there's a better one for it. But uh, we'll figure that out down the line. I don't want to stop this one project just because of that. And I'm thinking this is going to be a bag I test for myself anyway. So it's not for customer. I'm just going to accept the fact that it's not going to have any binding and we'll just move on. It'll probably fray a little bit on the inside, but it's really the pattern that I'm testing. I want to make sure that the bag works. So the rest of this should be pretty smooth sailing. There are four long stitches down the sides that basically make up the body of the bag, as well as the bottom gusset panel. You'll see why later, but we learned it's really important to give yourself plenty of room with the stitch allowance. I'd say at least half an inch, especially where you have lots of layers coming together. This is normally the point where we would run the binding to keep the interior seams looking clean, but since we're skipping that step, we can start turning the bag. This 16 ounce waxed stuff is a lot harder to turn than it looks, but it's still 10 times easier than turning an all leather bag. Once Michael finished turning, we noticed multiple spots where some pieces didn't get caught in the stitch. There were even some spots near the top that were sewn too close to the edge of the fabric, so the stitch just pulled apart. 
None of this is too big of a deal. We just decided to turn it inside out again and run some new stitches. Back she goes. So this time, Michael moved in quite a bit from the edge and ran a new stitch on two of the sides. Unfortunately, there was still one small spot on the side pocket that didn't get caught in the stitch. But in the interest of time, we decided to just move on. I'll probably turn it again and fix that spot later. I'm stuffing the bag to allow it to take on its natural shape and it also helps us make more accurate cuts for the straps. So we're both diving into all the leather detail work. Basically just a lot of beveling and setting rivets. We're using 9mm double cap rivets from Buckle Guy. And for the shoulder straps, I'm using a couple Conway buckles. I made a video explaining why I like using Conway buckles for shoulder straps and also how to install them. I'll link that video here. I'm realizing here that I made the cinch strap a bit too long, so I ended up cutting it down just a few inches. But there's one last detail I had to add, the zipper pulls. I really like using leather cord for these. I buy it from a place called leathercordusa.com, and I love the natural color of these. They accent any bag really well. In hopes that you can get some value out of this as, as much as I do. I want to express some of the things that I learned through this. A lot of it was in just the kind of nitty gritty details that, that I'm not sure I can put a finger on, but one of the main things I learned was that the canvas is probably a little bit too heavy. I went into this thinking I wanted the gnarliest, heaviest waxed canvas I could find. This is 16 ounce wax canvas, and I know that's not the heaviest. You can get 24 and up, but um, I figured this would be a pretty good balance, and in the end, I've feel like it was probably just a little bit too heavy. It just made life a lot harder on us. It's not as forgiving. It also made the bag pretty heavy. So I think I'll probably go with maybe like a 10 ounce if I'm doing waxed or stick to 16 if I'm just doing like a duck cloth or twill um, without the wax. I don't think I would put this zipper on it. Although I really love having a smaller pocket to put things like little adapters and headphones and things that you don't want to lose in the big pocket. Um, but I just don't love the look of it. it made it a little too complex and I really love simple silhouettes, you know, kind of more of a min minimalist style. So I don't think I would put that back on. I am pretty happy with this side access zipper pocket. Um, I feel like this is kind of a must for a roll top because if I was using this for my regular laptop bag, there's no way I want to be unrolling this and using that buckle every single time. So um, with this, I could slide my laptop in there um, you know, jacket, whatever, and have pretty quick access to it. So that was a big win. Overall, I feel like this was a really good jump into the fabric world for me, and I learned a lot throughout this build. I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. Honestly, I'm excited to just keep going and make more and uh, keep at it. So I think the next canvas project we're gonna do is a duffel bag, which might even be a little bit simpler. Thank you guys for watching. This was a fun one. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.